I was going to say, I, I'm, a, I'm a long-time fan of the show right. before I started working. And I just know as a fan, I would have paid anything to get close to the show in any way. Right. You know? And, and I always thought it was awesome that you didn't rip off the fans that way. Right. I would have paid hundreds of dollars to eat with, you know, Gary or something, you know? <laughs> right, right. And it's just like, because I know as a fan, you just want to get close. And I really think Lisa's taking advantage of the people that just mm. want to touch the show, to get close to the show in some way. And yeah. I don't think it's right to I, take yeah. advantage. Yeah, Lisa, I, I'm trying to figure out why I'm turned off to your Sweden greed. I'm really struggling to give you exact words why, but it just doesn't seem like there's enough value there. It seems like you're taking advantage of my show and charging people 100 bucks to meet you because you're on the show. My talent is baking. But you're not giving a baking class. No, but I'm baking mostly everything that's there, and they'll get a chance to meet me. The guys do. But when you, well, every time you say they get a chance to meet me, I don't know why I don't that do bothers stand-up you. comedy. What am I supposed to do? I can't go and they're doing the maybe same thing. Maybe do nothing. I have I mean, been doing I mean, nothing. Maybe not charge people a hundred bucks to meet you. Like maybe let them meet you for free. Then why don't the comedy shows? How come they're not for free? Because they're doing stand-up comedy. They're doing a show. Well, it's Scott Salem's a show. No, you know it's JD's not Scott. JD's a show. It's, no, it's it's the Shuli and the two other comics. Okay, so Those why guys is Scott there. and JD making money or Ronnie? Well, maybe because you should have joined that group. Hold on. Yeah, maybe you should what? go on the road with them. Why? Why? Yeah, that would why be fun. Because our because show? When, because you no, know, what I'm saying is because wait, wait when. Wait a minute. Why are you knocking our show? That's what I don't understand. No, but, but can I I'm just say something? I'm not knocking your show. I'm, I never said I was a comedian. Let's get that straight. No, no, no. no. What I'm saying I'm is hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Before you hijack wow. this conversation. See, but but because his whole show is a show. And it's kind of a joke. But when they come to see you, there's not even a show. Like, he does get up on stage and, like, entertain the people. I mean, it's I shitty entertainment. I get girls up to take their clothes off. But he does. I mean, he does <laughs> you something. You just said it's, sh <laughs> it's, it's shitty. shitty. It's a shitty show, but it's at least an attempt to entertain. All right, this your is my attempt. Yeah, but your attempt is to do nothing. Hey, you know, I was thinking, while, while you guys are here, I was thinking about this whole Lisa G thing and the sweet and greed party. Yeah. Because I was trying to wrap my head around it yesterday, and I couldn't quite figure out where I stood on it in my in my head, you know. But uh, one thing did occur to me, and I really do feel this way, that if Lisa's going to use the show to get, you know, to the only reason people are going to see Lisa's sweet and greed is because she works on our channels. I'd surely be the first one to attest to it with the Ronnie Block party. Absolutely. Movie. But the distinction I do make, and it was brought up on the show yesterday, Shuli and the guys always have Howard TV there or the news department, yeah. and they provide something back. They, they provide a television element or something or a radio element. And it did rub me the wrong way when Lisa yesterday said, I mean, in a real way, like Lisa said, hey, I'm not doing this for TV. I'll, you, know, she can't, you can't pick and choose. If you want to come on the air and you want to promote your sweet and greed or whatever you're up to, don't tell me the quid pro quo isn't there where you're going to provide some kind of entertainment for us. Right. You know, and this idea that I don't know if the fans want to be on TV. What fans don't want to be on TV? Her they fans. all have Howard TV. Yeah. They're all dying to be on there. Yeah, and if they don't want to be, then don't use my fans. So here's, here's my ruling on this. I'm, you know, I guess I'm okay if Lisa wants to charge $100 for people to see her or Shuli wants to charge her. But don't, don't, don't sit there and tell me you're not going to be on Howard TV. That, 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 if you're going to be now a performer... And you're going to use my audience to show up at stuff. Then you got. Then you got to play ball. That's it. I really do feel that way. That ain't right. There are times I've offered. I told Doug, give me a camera, one of the small ones. I'll film stuff while we're on the road. When, well, it, it, after shows, I'm going around interviewing the guys and fans, you know, with my recorder. Like, and if Lisa doesn't want to do that, that's fine. But don't bring it up on the air that you're doing sweet and great, and don't use the airwaves for that. Because yeah, if these it's a are my private airwaves. personal thing, right. don't use this show to promote it. Right. I really do feel that way. And, and not just for Lisa, but for everybody. And one thing I will say about Benji. Benji lets me come and videotape him and his girlfriend singing. And that's th th some of the funniest shows on Howard TV. And, and I hate being on TV. What? I hate being on TV. Yeah, and once he started that, I even said, we got to, we got to, no, we, like you didn't want anyone taping in your apartment, but you said, okay, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And but that's fair. I can't understand why she wouldn't want it. It would make it... Well, because she's not understanding that. Actually, that's the only thing that's... If you're going to be in this business and you're going to be on the Howard Stern show, if the TV is there, it actually becomes something people like. They even pointed out yesterday no. that they were on the balls of their butt with the Ronnie Block party until you saw the footage and right. it went on Howard TV. Yeah, what you do is you pray that it gets on Howard TV. Yeah, 100% right. And then your business grows. 
So yep. anyway, that's my ruling on all of this. If you've got restrictions and I've got restrictions, don't bring it up on the air. Don't mention it on Howard Stern Radio, Howard Stern TV, because to me it's all Howard Stern everything. It's a business. Howard, if you care, Lumer gave me sort of an update. What's up? Ooh. Tell me the update. She called everybody who bought a ticket. Yeah. And everybody except for being on TV except for one person. Yeah, so. So she's trying to figure out how to handle it. I got it all figured out. <laughs> Never, ever bring up anything you're doing outside of these sh these channels again. And if that person doesn't want to be on TV, tell them not to come. Refund their money. Right. But from now on, it's a t everything is on TV. I don't want to hear people telling me they're picking and choosing. Because I'm picking and choosing. I'm picking and choosing. And if you choose not to be on the team, then don't, th then don't do it. And listen, Lisa does a fine job and everything, and I would never ask her to be on TV if, you know, if she's just doing it. But if you're going to start using the airwaves to promote events and use my audience, then you've got to give something back. That's how I feel. Now, what do you think of that, Doug? Your Honor, I think it's a great decision. Right. That's why I'm America's judge. That's right. Uh, what is your ruling, uh, Your Honor, on her appearing on Howard TV for interviews, like the behind-the-scenes <laughs> show? Sometimes she's involved, like when we go out with Benji, with the Anthony Weiner press conference. Right. We did a behind the scenes show on that, and she was a, a big part of that, but she refused to be interviewed. What is your ruling on that? She refused to be interviewed without payment. That's ridiculous. I agree. This is all, listen, it's like I explained the other day. What, what do you think we're doing here? <laughs> do you Howard TV to me is no different than Sirius Radio. It's yeah. all the same. Right. It's you all promotion it's and promoting. It's the same thing if I said to her when she interviews me, Lisa, I can't be interviewed for Howard 100 News. I need to be paid for this. It's a, right. it's a thought that would it, never, well, that's ever psychology, cross ahead. If Doug Goodstein, every time we, we ask him to be on the air, and since I demand payment, I'm fucked. We're, we're, then i got to get rid of Doug Goodstein. But you know what? When I went to Peru, Howard, I went to Doug and I said, give me a camera. Maybe some interesting stuff will come out of this. This is my own personal vacation. Right. But I just decided, you know, hey, let everybody in on this. Thank and God it, you and did. And it was fabulous. <laughs> yeah. And, and my point is, if you're going to, listen, you can't pick and choose how you're going to use the Howard Stern Show. This ain't a Chinese food menu. We're all in this. And it's one thing if, okay, you know, Lisa wants to work in the news department, not promote anything, and this and that, the other, that's one thing. But, but th don't, don't, don't tell me you're not going to allow a camera, and then I'm not going to allow you to use my airwaves. All of this stuff is good to us. We should be good mm. to it. And it just doesn't go for Lisa. I mean, for everybody. It's the well, way it is. She also buried herself for when, if there is something after this, she said she works for Sirius XM, so when everyone moves on, she must stay here. Yeah, but what happens... She's not a part of the team. Right, and what, yeah, right, exactly. And what happens if you start saying, well, I work for Howard TV. I'm not talking to Howard 100 News. Well, it would never happen. No, I know, because yeah. you're not that kind of guy. Right. No one is around here except it's all. Her. It's all fun. Yeah. No one's ever... I've been here 18 years. No one's ever... We've never had someone split hairs like this, ever. Like it's just right. it's just not in anyone's Yeah, well, uh, I was head. thinking about it, and that's what I think was bothering me about it. There's you a know? lot of, uh, I mean, this place is a lot of turmoil. Really? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone. The wrap-up show was like, it was uh, 15 guys in there just ready to to unload on her Well, yesterday. listen. And no one wants to be mean and make her cry, but it seems, th I think the thing that's frustrating the most is that she doesn't seem to get it. And it's just like she, tunnel vision, you know? It's like she sees it her way, and we're all idiots. Wow. Well. I see it my way. Well, you're right. It's your well, show. It's your the boss. I wonder how she feels about this ruling. But I mean, if anybody else, well, well, it's it's a clear ruling, Robin. I'm I'm saying, look, anybody who wants to use these airwaves, the Howard Stern Show airwaves, mm -hmm. uh, you, you can't pick and choose how you want to use them. Yeah. If you want to start a side business off of me, because this is my audience, this right. is the way I look at it. You want to start a side business off of me? You want to sell something? All right, I'm open to it. But don't tell me that I can't bring a camera there. Uh, fine, you don't want to bring a camera. Then don't use the airwaves to promote it. That's how I feel. I two, mean, two-way street. Yeah, there's there there. You can't choose how you're going to use me. I'm telling you the rules. These are the rules. The judge has spoken. <laughs> Tell your mother, Shuli, and ask her a review. <laughs> <laughs> ask a, her to review it. It's a package deal. You can't. It's you a can't. package. Ah, now you said something meaningful. Thank you. Package deal. That's a good term. I like that. Good for you, Shuli. <laughs> and you if Lisa wants, a, wants clarification or anybody else around here wants clarification, come see me right, right now. Right now is the chance to talk about it. Right, Doug?
Absolutely. I mean, there's times when people don't want things on camera. Of course, we respect that always. Right. But to just shut it down is just unacceptable. Yes. The thing I don't get is putting it on Howard TV is only going to help. I mean, you may be well, in embarrassing uh, situations, but yeah. ultimately, it's only going to help your product. By the way, Howard TV did a behind the scenes of me at AGT, which you sent me to watch last night, the preview. I thought you guys did a great job. Yeah, it was a lot of footage. The guys did a good job for yeah, sure. Good job on that. And then you sent me something else that was kind of fun, too. Medicated Pete? Medicated Pete <laughs> on Rachel Fine. Holy oh my shit. God. Yeah? Is that for real? That, uh, dude, either he's the you best actor this. in the world or... What's happening? Rachel Fine on Fine Time. For, on ha uh -huh. for those of you who have Howard TV, you got a, a real winner to look for. That is to. also... A, we use it as like a promotional show. It's on HowardTV.com. I was riveted. I had dinner and plans. And on HowardStern.com. Yeah, you can I, see it. Oh, you can see it. You yeah. can see it for free. Yep. Oh, good. On HowardStern.com. And HowardTV.com. Yep, it's okay. up there right now. you got to watch this. It's a free show for anybody who wants to see it. Fine time. Rachel Fine. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Richie Wilson's uh, fiance. Yes. Uh, she's on there with Medicated Pete. And Medicated Pete doesn't know how to eat. So while she's interviewing him, she offers him a cupcake. <laughs> yeah. Like one of those big cupcakes that we have outside from, what was that place? Crumbs. Crumbs, Crumbs yeah. yeah. Like a big giant cupcake. And he's like, oh, you know. He starts eating. And somebody wrote a comment underneath that th he says... Medicated Pete eats like an iguana. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the cupcake is robbing all over his nose and his lips, and his lips start turning purple, and it's like, and like he can't swallow or something, and he starts oh, no. to eat it, and it's like he's like, he, he's, it's like, you know when brindle fly starts to eat? In, right, you know, right. He and he just, has to go, oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> and, and, and it's, it's, it's the most disturbing thing. And while he's talking, he's eating. And it's such a train wreck, fascinating piece of tape that I was late for dinner. I had dinner plans, oh. and I had to finish Medicated Pete's interview. I didn't think I'd be that interested. I in honestly wow. watched it. At least ten times. I just watch it in my. I just put it on and let it loop. Well, basically. the reason it's, it's the genius. Who is the genius that said, "Give him a cupcake" well, during his interview? I think it was probably Richie Wilson's idea. Richie Wilson. Yeah. That guy's a genius. That is incredible. <laughs> Immediately triple his salary. Okay. Oh, that's I right. Will. We have no money. <laughs> but look, there he is. I, look at his face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, he looks like he just made a bukkake video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's on HowardStern.com and wow. Howard... HowardTV.com and, Howard. and on Howard TV, the channel. Yeah, well. Howard TV. Oh, now, God. he can promote on my channels. That, and it's brilliant to keep interviewing him while that's going on. Right. Do you think, can I tell that weird story I told you about him the other day to prove that he's really out there? What, what the is one that? About, the one about that Joe Walsh's manager told me? Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> this is good. So uh, I think the James <laughs> gang was playing down at Red Bank. Right. And Joe Walsh's manager, Smokey, is a huge fan of the show, and so is one of the guys that runs the road crew. Right. So they're driving around Red Bank, and one of the guys goes, holy shit, that's medicated Pete. So they pull the car over, and they go to Pete, <laughs> get in the fucking car. And just Pete like just, that, right? Get yeah, in the fucking car. Yeah, and so Pete gets in, and they go, <laughs> you're going to be roadie for a day. Pete doesn't know who these people are. He doesn't he know what. He gets in the car. He gets in the car with complete strangers. Right. They bring him to the gig. And a couple people are like, oh, my God, it's medicated Pete. They're taking pictures. And he goes, all right, cut the shit. Go grab that box. And they made him work the whole day. Right. He's like, you're roadie for a day. But Pete just got into a stranger's car. Wow. He is weird. <laughs> and the weirdest part is that was a year and a half ago, and he's been here three times, and he's never told us that story. Yeah, how weird is that? Like, something cool happened to him, and he doesn't even talk about it. Never even mentions it. Yeah. I have a feeling that happens to Pete a lot. Like, like. People just grab him? Yeah, like, like, like he just gets into random cars. Like, sometimes he's raped. Sometimes he's, you know, who knows? Sometimes he never he's tells a, you any of Sometimes he's a, a huge rock star's roadie. It's just, it's just it's whatever happens to him for the day is the day. And he's somehow still alive. It's too I, much. I brought him to a gig once that I did in Jersey. How'd that go? I, he comes to my room before the gig to get ready, mm. and he goes to the bathroom to wash his hands, and apparently he washes his hands for like 15 minutes. Oh, he's got that, huh? So, because when I walk in, there's a lake on in, in the bathroom, like Shit. just a huge flood of water. He's all sloppy. <laughs> and he's up on stage, you know, singing Purple Rain with wet spots all over his shirt <laughs> and pants. But you know what's weird about him? Like, he's probably been to the White House. <laughs> like we don't even know yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's met Obama. He was probably at the you know the Queen's Jubilee he's celebration. Like Zelig, you know, yeah, he's like Zelig. Yeah, he shows up. These historic spots that nobody yeah. knows. Forrest Gump. All right. Well, anyway, there's my ruling on uh, all future endeavors from everybody. Okay. You I hope you know we we you know all know. I know. That, all right. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> what? I'm just I'm just nervous, man, because you know. Kind you don't of makes want everybody. Kind you don't want to make. You don't want to have Lisa send me over the edge, and then I'll stop all all the fun. Yeah, because you could be well. I mean, mm. you're well within your right to do that. You know, and right. I no, would I mean, I think it's it. fair.
It's fair. Doug, do you feel relieved that, because you've been holding this back, you've actually been protecting I, I never brought this up. I right. saved her face on this. I was being professional and respectful. I don't know who brought it up. I don't really care. But someone else brought it out yesterday, and obviously it came up, And but it wasn't me. I, I kept professional on this. I did not do, rat her out. I was going to save it and just not bring it up on air. But, uh, yeah, it came up, and... I feel, yeah, I feel like, you know, the judge has spoken. The boss has spoken. It, it should be, it's crystal clear. To, there's, what, 50 people up here? 49 get it. So, And you knew Howard would, would share the same of course. thought process. Like if, who has done this? Who would, like, that's like me asking John right now for holding a microphone. Like I said in there, John, pay me. For, I'm not, get this microphone away from me. I want to be paid. I work for Howard TV. This isn't the, the I work, I'm splitting hairs, John. This is Howard TV. I don't work for Sirius XM. Pay me for this, John. Pay, could you pay me? Answer the question. Pay me. No, thank you. Why? Because you work for the channel. Because I mean, you work for Howard. We all work for Howard. Because it's a package deal. It's a package right. deal. Yeah, it's a package deal, of course. So will you cover Lisa's sweet me? You know, now that's a good question, and I'm going to be hypocritical potentially because part of me doesn't want to cover it because I don't want to help her out now you know she split hairs and, and made her uh, uh, her feelings known and it's insulting and the other part is like no I wouldn't do that to the show I'm gonna if she if she <laughs> god I can't even say this if she allows us I mean really don't exploit and so try to sell tickets through the show no yeah we would cover it sure and I would be happy to cover for other ones and hopefully you know because I'm a good guy I'd like to help her out so if this could help her blow up her business, sure. Do I think it should just, would I be happier if it all went away? Yeah, probably, that's the truth. But yeah, I'd cover it and I'd cover subsequent ones as well. It seems though there should be no gray area. Howard ordered Lisa to give access to Howard TV. Yeah, this shouldn't be, but we're dealing with Lisa and Lisa seems to go by her own world, own rules in her own world. So. There might be another conversation Howard has to um, make it even clearer than he just did. That would be my guess. Lisa? Yes? Howard declared you must do interviews with Howard TV and allow no, Howard TV... No, that's not what he said. He said, if I'm using the air to promote an event, then Howard TV needs to be there, and I agree with him. But Howard did say we're all one team, and he wants you to participate in all Howard TV productions. That's not what he said, but I'm there a hundred percent in the hallways every morning. You're parsing words. You're not. That that is what he said. That is not what he said. That's not what I heard. Go back there and ask Gary what he said and Doug what he said. That's what he said. He said that he expects me yes, to. Yes, he says he expects you to do interviews with TV for behind the scenes, and he he expects you to do everything just like what he expects everybody to do. Well, then that's what I'll do. If I have time, this comes okay. first. Okay. But you're parsing words. That's all I'm I saying. I am not. That's what I heard. Then maybe I missed something, but that's what I thought I heard. I called you last night, Robin. I know, but it was right before um, AGT. AGT, so I, I figured you'd go into that. I wanted to watch it, so I figured we'd talk today. Yeah. Can't interrupt AGT. Well, it was 20 minutes before AGT. I figured we had some time, but you're right. You need to prepare for AGT. <laughs> AG By the time I saw the message, I think it was like 10 minutes before. By the way, how good was AGT last night? It was really good. Yeah, those hour shows fly by. They really do. Yeah, you can't. Re you don't realize when you're sitting inside how much is going on outside of the venue, how right. much is going on in the wings. I mean, again, I get hung up on every, like, I try to remember everything I said because we mm -hmm. taped for four days straight, like two shows a day. In Austin, yeah. Yeah, but I, I was really pleased with the show last night. I thought it was a real good one. And uh, But speaking of things AGT, how about the guy from the night before who is a war hero and stuttered? Did you read that he is a complete fraud? No. Yeah, like he, it was a total scam. What's even funnier, in some of the papers it goes, Howard Stern was scammed. Like, not even America's got time. Yeah, like, you did all the vetting. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I run You're not show. just sitting there. Yeah, no. Well, first of all, there can't be anything more despic... You know, th there's so much on my mind because I am dying to tell people what happens in Vegas. Not just about this guy, but about a lot of the talent. Uh-huh. All I can say this season on America's Got Talent, if you're following along at home... Uh, 
expect the unexpected on every level. Well, Never tonight, they, or, or was it next week, they were promoting that something's going to happen that's really shocking. Well, I think what they're going to show, if, based on what I saw, I saw the same thing, and I don't know, they don't tell me anything. But uh-huh. A lot of times, Howie, Sharon, and I really violently disagree. Uh-huh. And, and, and because they edit and they, have to only, they only have an hour, they don't always show all the disagreements, so I think right. It show... seems like you three are on the same page with most things. Yeah. In fact, Ronnie was saying how much he enjoyed the show last night because they did show some of the disagreeing, uh, a little bit of it. And uh, there's one one place I get so mad I eat half of Howie's face off. <laughs> it's crazy, like full on cannibalism. But yeah, they sort of indicated that there's a real or Howie wants someone to go through, and you're yeah. not right. I know. I think happy I know about they... that. Yeah, I think I know who it is too, and I was fucking livid <laughs> but I, you know so i don't know how much they're going to show of it it's funny like the things they choose to show too like i was doing math at the table you know when i do math right right yeah and, they, and i was surprised they showed that i was glad they showed that but because everyone wanted to know how much time we had left so i i did the math for them or how much time per contestant per, you were, yeah right yeah. i said oh let me handle the math <laughs> Uh, that's my forte. <laughs> and, and the show was over. You still had to come up with yeah, an answer. And I, and I said, well, here, let me just, ha- I want to do it on paper so I can show my work to the teacher. <laughs> Didn't you love that in school when you had to show your work? Absolutely. I was like, I'm in big trouble. I can't just look at somebody's answer on another, you know, paper. That was to keep you from cheating. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> I was really fucked up with that. I don't have any work. Uh, my work? Uh, <laughs> I don't <laughs> I know how work. I got I took a lucky guess. <laughs> Does that count? I'm a uh, genius. Yeah, so I don't know. It's like really weird because there were so many arguments when we taped. And sometimes they go to them and sometimes they don't. But maybe next week they're going to show one of them. Yeah, I like that uh, little Snapple room thing, too, where you guys are yeah. sitting back there talking about some of the contestants that really impressed you. Or yeah, but you know what's crazy? What was going on? What? When we were taping, we would be in the Snapple room for over an hour, at least twice a show. Really? Yeah, and like all it is is three seconds of the show. It's yeah. great. And I sit there and I go, you're kidding me. Trouble is, you can't figure out which three seconds are going to use. Yeah. Yeah, because they cut it up still, and you're jumping around from contestant to contestant. Yeah. I saw one one of the contestants last night. I think it was the only person I disagreed with you on the whole time. Yeah. And they didn't even show you voting no. Yeah. Did you notice that? Yeah. That was the other thing I was going to say. The, the, the girl that the sang girl. blue. Yeah. 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 See, all I can tell you is by the time we get to Vegas, I'm right about 100% of the time. <laughs> but, but in order to show you saying no, that was going to be three minutes. Right, it was going right. to take a long time. Maybe that was she- a big disagreement because on that girl, I didn't think she had the goods. But the only reason I want them to show because when we get to Vegas, a lot of times I'm proven right. And then- yeah, when she started singing, I said, you know, she's got a nice voice and everything, but she sounds like a million other people. Right. And, by the way, the thing that Howie and I disagreed on, everyone on Twitter agreed with me, that girl is a ter- tremendous singer. The one you yeah. you picked and said she was unique, she was amazing. Amazing. You talk about the girl and the guy? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, she was great. And, like, everybody wrote me on Twitter, how could Howie have said that that girl wasn't up to par? I mean, Howie they, they, has a 10 ear, I think. Well, I'm there to, uh, listen, Sharon 99% of the time sides with me mm-hmm. because she knows I'm right. And so, you know, I keep Howie in check. If yeah, he, because if he, goes he was astray. completely off on the girl singers. He liked yeah. the girl who was sort of mediocre and not mm. the girl who was completely unique. Yeah. Howie's great. Everyone writes me about the chemistry between us, uh, you know, even with Nick. I, I like Nick um, a lot. In yeah. fact, I had no... I, I, when I when I went to see the auditions, I was like, well, what is it that Nick does? He comes out and he says hello to the audience. Yeah, but it's all backstage. But watching him on TV, he's very funny, and he's, <laughs> yeah. he really is willing to put himself out there. He puts himself out there, and also he's real with the people. He doesn't... Oh, my God. When yeah. that girl came out to do that dance, the pole dance... Yeah. Right. And he wound up on the pole with her... Yeah. I was like, somebody's going to die. <laughs> Because that was too much weight for that pole. Those uh, temporary poles are pretty good. But listen how screwed up this is. And again, I wish I could tell you what happens in Vegas, but I'm not going to because I don't want to ruin the show for people and I want them to watch. Uh, But here it is. Talented liar. TV phenom's war injury tale. Now, the reason I think this is so screwed up, it messes it up for every real veteran who comes back from the war, regardless of injuries. Right. Because now no one believes you. Now all of a sudden, you know, the one thing that was... Remember in The Wire when the criminals talk about you never kill somebody on a Sunday morning church? Yeah. It, it's like that. It's like 
You could be the most fucked up liar on the planet, but you never lie about your military service. Got to have some rules. Well, you remember that guy running? What was he running for? Senator in Connecticut? I he, think Senate. He yeah, lied about Vietnam. He won. <laughs> you know, so, but, but this lie is so wrong on so many levels. TV Phenom's war injury tale. He's got talent. This is the guy from America's Got Talent. I'm assuming most of our fans are watching the show, so they know what I'm talking about. He's got talent and a lot of explaining to do. Sergeant Timothy Michael Poe, who, by the way, everyone was in tears over. I mean, I mean, I, I had know friends, the whole audience was crying. I had friends write me on email talking about they were home crying. Sergeant Timothy Michael Poe, a country western singing National Guard veteran. Remember when the National Guard didn't have to go to war? Like now, now you do. Right. You used yeah. to go into the National Guard to stay out. Yeah. Yeah. Forget it. You can't hide now. Uh, a uh, Michael Poe, a country western singing National Guard veteran who knocked the socks off judges on America's Got Talent Monday night, is a stutterer who claims to have suffered a brain injury during a 2009 tour of duty. If you remember, he, he said he stuttered after he got blown up. Right, yeah. Uh, military officials said yesterday he had never been wounded. Poe, whose silky smooth rendition of Garth Brooks, If Tomorrow Never Comes, left dozens in the studio audience, audience crying. He said he began to stutter three years ago when he was heard attempting to shield his men from a rocket-propelled grenade blast and now can speak clearly only when he sings. I mean, what an involved story. And, and by the way, that means like some guy in the military was watching this and said, you know, let me check this let guy's me, record. Let me, he probably knew him, said that dude wasn't ever in any action. But if this is true, then what was this guy thinking, that he wasn't going to be discovered? Yeah, like the military doesn't watch TV? I mean, everyone is going to think he is a fucking scumbag for lying about military service and getting blown up. I don't think he really thought through what would happen if he got on TV. But the Minnesota National... But his wife was there with him, too. And, and, um, and oh, but, Hey, they have had scam artist teams before. Yeah, but no, the wife says, I don't know anything about this. L listen to this. But the Minnesota National Guard said yesterday that Poe was never injured in the line of duty, nor did he serve in the military for 14 years, as he claimed on national TV. He must be like one of those women who, fake, who, who like gets themselves ill so people will feel bad for him. Munchausen's yeah, disease. He's got the male version of Munchausen's disease. <laughs> Sergeant Timothy Michael Poe served in the Minnesota Army National Guard from December 3rd, 2002 until May 26, 2011. Let me do the math there. Real quick math. I think that's nine years, not 14. Right. And performed as a... Uh, sorry, I didn't write it down. And I don't see any work. I didn't do any work. And performed <laughs> as a, su a supply specialist, said Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Olson, a spokesman for the Min Minnesota Guard. Quote, his military records indicate that he served with the Minnesota National Guard in Kosovo from October 10, 2007 until July 15, 2008, and was deployed to Afghanistan from July 28, 2009 to August 30, 2009. So he did serve, and he was in Afghanistan. Kosovo. No, it says also, he says was deployed to Afghanistan oh, okay. from July 28, 2009 to August 30, 2009. I think that's almost like a year. But I'm not sure. I'd have to really put pencil to paper. I, I'm not. No, wait. Up. Let's see. Two, July 28, 2000. July. Uh, yeah. July, September. <laughs> no, what, what comes after July, Robin? August? August. Right. <laughs> I skipped that. August. August. <laughs> That's one months. month. Right. He was there a month. <laughs> Holy smokes. Not Boy. that you can't get hurt in a month. Once you do the math and, you know, <laughs> it's complicated math, I'll admit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a month. <laughs> I thought it was 2008 to 2009. It's no. 2009 to 2009. <laughs> That's a month. <laughs> Don't get tricked. That's a trick question, you know. That's right. And he's not mm -hmm. telling you what part of the month. It could have been a few weeks. He might have been there a day. <laughs> Sergeant Poe's official military records do not indicate that he was injured by a grenade in combat while serving in Afghanistan in 2009, as a report said the spokesman. Poe's ex-wife, Kelly Ballard, said she had never heard her former spouse stutter like he did on the show. So it was a fake stutter. Right. Wow. There was no... Well, you notice that when he was talking to Nick, Nick said, you know you got through that whole sentence without a stutter? Yeah, he forgot. Like he forgot. Yeah. Holy mackerel. There was no combat injuries, said Ballard from her Texas home. I think he's developed a feel sorry for me. St uh, I feel sorry for me stutter. Oh. Boy, this really sickens me.
I know. And not because it happened on America's Got Talent. I mean... In general. Just, yeah. I mean, oddly enough, this will probably bring more viewers to America's Got Talent. This is like a full-page ad for the show. So from that aspect, it's good. But the, the, the bad part of it is for military guys who actually serve, and they, you know, they're walking around with one leg blown off. And then they and go and they, they go. can't tell their story. Yeah, you go and say, hey, yeah, I got my leg blown off of the grain. They're like, yeah, right. Yeah, but just right, like the right, guy right. in America's Got Talent. There was no combat injury, said Ballard from her Texas home. I think he developed a feel sorry for me stutter. In a video detailing Poe's backstory filmed in the Austin, Texas auditions uh, for Monday's show, uh, the country singer said that in Afghanistan he volunteered to clear buildings and help rescue wounded people, and one day someone armed with a rocket-propelled grenade launched open fire. How the fuck did he do this with a straight face? Somebody told him a story, and he decided to make it his yeah. own, probably. I saw it coming down, and by the time I turned and went to jump on top of my guys, I yelled, grenade, and the blast had hit me, Poe said. You know, it's amazing, too. They didn't even show my whole speech to him. I was talking about his service, and... Well, you thanked uh, him. I did, but I, I did a lot more. You know, they have to edit it down. Thank goodness they didn't show and, him. And I remember, I thought I was about to lose it and cry for the guy. That's, uh. how, that's how upset I was for him. Yeah, thank goodness they saved you with Shit, the editing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I could have looked like a real pussy. <laughs> I saw it coming down, and by the time I turned and went to jump on top of my guys, like he's a huge hero. Right. I mean, this is a story with nothing but hero smacked all over it. I yelled grenade, and the blast had hit me, Poe said. He claimed that... He claimed that had he not been injured, he might never have discovered his singing voice. Right, because he yeah. discovered that with the speech pathologist. Boy, I wish I could tell you what happens in Vegas. I, I wish they would fast forward on that one. Well, don't, because, yeah. you know, right now, as far as we're concerned, he's still in the competition. Oh, yeah, no, liar. no, he's in. Uh, uh, but that's what I'm telling you. you. We might go to Vegas and fall for it even harder. <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. Just be prepared. But Ballard said years earlier he was the lead singer in a band called Crawl Space. Show producers said they first learned only yesterday that Poe had been lying. Poe could not be reached for comment yesterday. Yeah, and they actually vet these guys pretty well, I thought. Yeah, he crawled back under his rock.